very good key uh, observation because that's a lot of what we're doing when we're doing that active listening is we are, so that bleeds in, okay, what empathy is, uh, another way of putting what empathy is in my opinion is when we turn all of our mirror neurons on to the point where we become just a literal emotional mirror for the other person and now they're just looking at themselves via us. Uh, which allows them to write, to clarify things, to correct things, to say, oh, no, 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 I don't actually feel that. I don't think that. Um, but it, when they don't have that mirror to be able to examine that stuff, they may not be able to realize that what they're saying isn't actually connecting with what they're feeling and thinking. And giving them that space and that mirror, they can kind of realize, oh, no, I'm not, it doesn't seem like I am communicating effectively right now. Maybe I need to rephrase what I'm saying. Uh, and, and all in a safe I'm just looking at a mirror of myself situation, not a competitive or fighting situation. I was just gonna say, uh -huh. it like evenly re redistributes the weight of all mm -hmm. of the feelings onto everybody and you're just all on the same trip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the last thing I'm gonna say, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Sure. That statement, like her mirror neurons, mm -hmm. um, when you say the <coughs> act of turning them on, Yeah. Uh, how do you do that? What do I mean by that? Yeah. Um, like, how do we do that? that is everything we've just been doing, okay. I think, today. Where we looked at those stories, we kind of processed and feel the feelings that Joe and Sarah are feeling. We do this active listening. I mean, we want to be present with the person and perceiving what they're feeling. And within all of us, this is going to get a little sciencey, and I do have to keep us moving because I would. This, this is only half the presentation. We're now way over half my time, and uh, anyways, my timing was not well done for this. But um, basically, within all of us, we have mirror neurons um, that, when we see uh, the classic example is when we see someone in pain, we feel pain, right? If you think about uh, all those home videos of dad gets whacked in the crotch with a baseball bat, we like, ugh, like even, especially men do, but like women do it even a little bit, I noticed, they wince a little bit, they, they even understand, ooh, that's painful. Like, uh, that's your mirror on your own activating. That's what that is. So this is just trying to tap into that and do that whenever we want to, not just when it's for, that's a situation where we're on the, we almost have no option but to respond that way. Or, uh, if, we, if anyone saw Siriana when they pull out the guy's fingernails, oh, ugh. Um, right. Uh, like we just gutturally react that way because we have to. This is trying to take that guttural thing that's already in us. We're already biologically predisposed to do this. How can we tap in and do it with it, like whenever we want and actively? Yeah. Awesome. Right. Right. <laughs> awesome. Um, the last thing I'll say about empathy, and then I have to move on, is about we also uh, have to learn about giving ourselves an, uh, empathy. And if we give ourselves empathy, <sighs> that helps a lot. <laughs> um, that helps a lot in deconstructing enemy images of other people. That helps a lot in deconstructing enemy images of ourselves. Um, it helps with a lot of things. Uh, and uh, I don't have enough time to really go into it more. But learning about giving yourself empathy, doing everything we just learned today about with Joe and Sarah and actively listening and trying to tease out the deeper feelings and needs that are really going on and getting out of our mental thought patterns. If we can do that with ourselves. Yeah, it's okay to be wrong. Yeah, it's okay yeah. to be wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. It's enlightening to realize it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. I mean, it gets easier, you know, it does. to learn how to be wrong. Yeah. So the second part of what nonviolent communication is, um, something I call, I have a mnemonic device called old friends never run, O-F-N-R. Four things, observation, feelings, needs, and requests. <laughs> um, as a way that we communicate, but this is not meant to be a language that we always communicate in. These are kind of four areas we want our minds to focus on. OFNR is a great practice tool um, to get our minds to focus on that. And many people, including myself, find it very useful to communicate in OFNR um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, but then there are a lot of drawbacks because it sounds very jarring. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's actually get into the meat of it. Uh, so observation. <coughs> when I say an observation, I mean a photographic a picture, if we took a camera and took a snapshot of what happened, that's what we want to be saying in an observation. Um, 
So by that I mean something that is judgment free. So when, uh, an example I like a lot is if you're sitting in one of these panels and you're in the back and someone else is talking and you're trying to listen, you might be prone to turn to that person and say, hey, stop interrupting. So you've made an observation that person's interrupting. But it's not really a photographic observation. That's an observation mixed in with a judgment. You're being rude. You're interrupting. Interrupting is an evaluative term that says that you're not considering the other person's time. A photographic observation of that same instance might be, you know, you're talking at the same time that that other person's talking. You've just eliminated that word interrupt. And what that gives you is that when you say you're interrupting, uh, when someone says that to me, I say, no, I'm not. I don't interrupt people. <laughs> I'm not rude. I learn my P's and Q's. <laughs> now we're going to get, and then the other person comes back at me and says, yes, you are interrupting. No, I'm not. And I, we're now just debating whether I'm interrupting. And now we're, none of us are hearing the panel, and it's just a joke. Um, you're not talking about what's actually going on. You're talking about, um, you're trying to even, you're still trying to get to what's going on. And so often we get lost at that step. Uh, so let's do, so I have a couple of examples here. Um, I'll shoot through them and see whether people think that they are photographic observations or whether they're just uh, a value, if they're something else. So the first one, Tim didn't ask for the group's input during the meeting. Is that, an obs is that a photographic observation of what Tim did during the meeting? No, I saw a no. Um, well, it depends because Tim may have thought that he considered <coughs> people's input even though he may not directly ask. Sure. So Tim may think he considered other people's input. But if he at no point in the meeting asks, what do people think about this? You know, then this observation becomes very real. I, I intended the answer to be yes. I could see how the answer may be no and we could talk about that, but I intended that to be an easy yes. Easy <coughs> yes off the bat that everyone could get. Yeah, I think that's yes because if it was no, it would be more Tim didn't consider the group's thought. Mm, that might be more of a no, right? If I had written it as Tim didn't consider what other people are thinking, yeah, then I'm making more of a judgment about what Tim or is or is not doing inside of his head. Versus you didn't ask for anything in the meeting. Asked in the meeting. Good, 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 good. Second one. Sarah never listens to anyone and does everything by herself. Yeah. Judgment. That word never, never and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Generalizations, Absolutes. right? Absolutes are generally like a made name, right? <laughs> generally judgments. They're generally judgments if we're making a generalization or an absolute statement. That's generally going to be that's that should be a red flag when you hear that, oh this person's about to make a judgment. Not always, but generally that's about to be what's the next sentence the next words out of their mouth are gonna be a judgment. Um, the third one. Bob left the materials for the busted screen at home. Observation. Observation. Photographic. That's what happened. No one can argue with that. What we're getting at is observations that no one can argue with. Bob can't come back and say, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did, Bob. The DVD's at your house. Like, <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know how we're going to debate this here. Like, you know, like, so, you know, we want things that you can't debate over. So that's an observation. I think the last one everyone's going to get. Fred complains whenever we plan an event. Judgment. Judgment. Okay, Complaints. Whenever. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever. Also, I wanted to point out, um, how do people feel about the word complain? It's, an, it's really like, why are you talking so much? Mm -hmm. I feel like there could be a better word for it. There could be a better word for it. Because it kind of has like a really, I don't know, sort of negative connotation to it, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you can see a lot of what we're working on here is just our language choice. An observation, we're, we're, it's about word choicing and whether we want to choose words that we know have connotations that create fight, flight, or freeze reactions in other people or do we want to choose words that we know will avoid the fight, flight, and freeze reaction in other people. That's what's going on in the observation phase of this OFNR. I definitely think when people hear what, they, they're, what they've said being called a complaint, they don't feel like it's been well received. Yeah. It's like annoying to everyone else, you know. Right. They hear that judgment, those judgmental terms. Yeah. So if I wanted to make a, an observation, but actually make an observation using, you know, that type of statement, Fred. How, how could I change it using Fred? Using the Fred one? Yeah. Sure. Um, 
So I wrote down, I, I thought people might ask that. Right. So, I, so what I wrote as being an alternative might be, when we planned a busted screening last week, Fred would repeatedly bring up problems, but wasn't interested in hearing any of the solutions. That might be uh, a more, even that I might like to tweak a little said bit he more. wasn't interested yet. Yeah. It, you'd have to he say didn't. he doesn't appear. He didn't, he didn't appear. Yet. He didn't <laughs> appear interested. People at the front here are suggesting that I might have reworded that to say. Um, what he it, didn't express interest. He didn't express interest in solutions, might have been a softer way. I agree. The way I wrote that, it was kind of last minute and fast. But um, yeah, it, it, that I agree that that part of the statement is where I kind of get a little queasy, but I couldn't. My imagination wasn't big enough, so thank you for providing tools. Um, yeah, so that might be, does that help you get a better yeah, idea about, about what you can say to Fred? Yeah. 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 Or even if you want to talk about how he generally feels like this says whenever you could say, he often um, contributes input that is more negative. Or, or uh, disturb, like, is unsatisfying or is unsettling to some group members. Mm. I have I have some concerns with are not satisfying, but um, but that's okay. Uh, I think just if the place complain of expressed concerns. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Fred expresses concerns. Yeah, and then maybe and then so observations we don't stop there, right? There's three more things we have to say. <laughs> that's just sentence one. So um, so don't think that the sentence we say here about our observation needs to be so we might say something like Fred gives input that. Is what? What did we say? Um, is more ne is expresses concerns. That's what we said. Expresses concerns, and then the next thing it might be that makes me feel. I feel uh, anxious about that because my need for productivity and contribution are being met. But anyways, we're gonna get to what I just said in the. Yeah, yeah. No, I was actually uh -huh. doing. The, yeah, yeah. About the feelings, where like once you change it from them to me. Yeah. Uh, it completely makes it a non-threatening statement. Yeah. Yeah. I statements are very important. Mm -hmm. And if you're identifying your feelings, it makes it easier for other people to feel empathetic to them. Because mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. be verified by they, their feelings right about what you're doing. Yeah. 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 And I love that because that leads right into the next F, feeling. So feeling, and this is what I was going to point out that chart in the back. There's that whole chart of feelings you could talk about. Um, feelings are... Excuse me. They're statements about our emotions, right? They're just statements about our emotions with no mixture of evaluation. Again, this is going to be a common thing. No mixture of judgments or evaluations in there. So let's go through a few quick examples. Um, well, uh, I feel like you're not helping the group enough. Judgment? I hear judgment. I saw some other shaking of heads. Uh, yeah, I think you could. Re this is one where you could replace feel with think. Yeah. Yeah, I have a thought here. I have an opinion that you don't help enough. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, again, people will use the word feel when really they should be using the word think. Not should. I don't like that word. Anyways. Um, <laughs> but, uh,. Uh, should implies moralistic judgments, and uh, we can get into that later. Um, so let's go to example number two. I feel frustrated when I think about all the work <coughs> I have to do. Yeah, I, that's. I think it's that right there. I, I, I feel I'm just yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a feel. Yeah, and I would be in agreement with you all that that's that's a statement about a feeling. That's not, I'm just, that's how I feel right now when I think about those things. Um, I'm sad that you're not going to support the medical amnesty policy. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's kind of like, it's a, uh, I think it's a feeling statement, definitely, but I think it's kind of being pushy a little bit. Yeah, like mm -hmm. you can't force it onto someone else. Yeah. You know, like, it's judging them for not supporting it. And like, it's not like going with mean, your ideals. Well, I don't think it's sad. Mm -hmm. It seems like you call me looking well, for money. I think that's money. a judgment mm -hmm. saying that that person doesn't feel sad. Oh, that's just my judgment. Right. I'm sure. Interesting. I'm, I'm getting interesting reactions. Sure. I, I disagree with that. I think if this person had said, I feel, I feel that you should, or I feel like you should, uh -huh. this, that would be very judgmental. But right. Because he's just talking about his own personal experience. Right. 
everyone experiences things in their own way, so we need to express that. Honestly. Right. Honestly. So I, yeah. I think this is honest. Uh huh. This is personal.